When you print money on the scale that modern nations are printing it, Japan, the United States, Europe, etc., we're getting into new territory in terms of size. The Japanese bought back not only a lot of their own debt, but a lot of their common stocks. So the Federal Reserve System, you can't imagine how much money printing Japan has done. They haven't had all that much inflation and they it's still a very admirable civilization. In fact, you, you could argue that Japan is one of the more admirable civilizations in the whole world. In spite of all this very extreme government money printing they've done, and they haven't had terrible consequences. Now they've had 25 years of stasis with living standards not improving very much. I don't think that came from their macroeconomic policies. I think that came from the rise of tough competition for their export powerhouse from China and Korea. At any rate, it's weird what's happening and nobody knows for sure how it's gonna work out. Uh, I think it's encouraging that Japan can print as much money as it has and remain as civilized and calm as, and, and admirable as it has. And so I hope to God the United States is similar happy outcome. But I think the Japanese are better adapted for stasis than we are. I think it's a duty-filled, civilized bunch of people, a lot of them older, not many young people, and, and they just suck it in and cope. In our country, we have terrible tensions. It's way harder to run a country which is not mono-ethnic like Japan. There's some professor at Harvard that has written extensively on this subject. It's way harder to run a nation like the United States with different ethnicities and groups and so forth than it is to run Japan. There are, Japan is basically sort of a mono-ethnic civilization which is proud of its ethnicity and of course they can cope with it troubles more than, better than some other people can. We do know from what's happened in other nations, if you, if you try and print too much money, it eventually causes terrible trouble. And we are closer to terrible trouble than, than we've been in the past, but it may still be a long way off. I certainly hope so. When Volcker, after the 70s, took the prime rate to 20% and the government was paying 15% on its government bonds, that was a horrible recession, lasted a long time, caused a lot of ag agony. And I certainly hope we're, never, we're not going there again. I think, the, I think the conditions that allowed Volcker to do that without an interference from the pol politicians were very unusual. And I think it, in 2020 hindsight, it was a good thing that he did it. I would not predict that our modern politicians will be as willing to permit a new Volcker to get that tough with the economy and bring on that kind of a recession. So I think the new troubles are likely to be different from the old troubles. The troubles that come to us could be worse than what Volcker was dealing with. Think of all the Latin American countries that print too much money. They get strongmen and so forth. That's what Plato said happened in the early Greek city-state democracies. One person, one vote, a lot of egality, and you get demagogues and the demagogues lather up the population and pretty soon you don't have your democracy anymore. I, I don't think that was a crazy idea on Plato's part. I think that accurately described what happened in Greece way back then and, and it's happened again and again and again in Latin America. We don't want to go there, at least I don't. We've done something pretty extreme and we don't know how bad the troubles will be or whether we're going to be like Japan or, or something a lot worse. What makes life interesting is we don't know how it's gonna work out. I think we do know we're flirting with serious trouble. I think we also know that some of our earlier fears were, were overblown. Japan is still existing as a civilized nation in spite of unbelievable excess by all former standards in terms of money printing. Think of how seductive it is. You have a bunch of interest-bearing debts and you pay them off with checking accounts, which you're no longer paying interest. Think of how seductive that is for a bunch of legislators. You get rid of the interest payments and you just, the money supply goes up. It seems like heaven. And of course, when things get that seductive, they're likely to be overused. It may be that you have to choose the least bad, 
of your a bunch of options that frequently happens in human decision making and the mongers have berkshire stock costco stock chinese stock suli lu a little bit of daily journal stock and a bunch of apartment houses do i think that's perfect no do i think it's okay yes i think the great lesson from the mongers is you don't need all this damn diversification that's plenty of you're lucky if you've got four good assets I think the finance professors and the that sell the idea that perfect diversification is professional investment. If you're trying to do better than average, you're lucky if you have four things to buy. And to ask for 20 is really asking for egg in your beer. It's it's very few people get can have enough brains to get 20 good investments. <laughs>